Uh, dudes? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing another video in the series Fab 101. Today's video is going to be about properly shanking your bolts. This is sometimes overlooked by people when they're building a car or truck or whatever their application may be, and it can lead to bolts failing by bending or breaking when they don't necessarily have to. So the first things you're probably asking is what is shanking my bolts and how do I do it or why do I need to do it? So first we need to pull out some bolts so I can explain it to you. This is the bolt section we have in the shop. Ryan Weaver, the one who we built the single cab Ranger for, he bought this for us as part of doing the truck. So thank you, Ryan. This has been a huge lifesaver to have here. And in this kit, this kit you can buy on, I believe it's Home Depot and it comes with everything you see here. So it goes all the way from quarter, goes down, and then you go all the way over to three quarters. So that's the biggest size they have. So quarter, five sixteenths, three eighths, seven sixteenths, half inch, five eighths, three quarter. So it has most of the sizes that you're gonna be using every day. It's all grade eight, so they're really strong bolts in here. This kit comes with a bunch of different length bolts, and it also comes with block washers, normal nuts, and nylocks. So you have a big assortment of stuff within this kit and a lot of stuff you can do with it. So I arbitrarily picked out a few different 3 8 bolts. These are all different lengths, but there's something else different in between them. And that's gonna be the shank of the bolt, which is also known as the grip of the bolt. They're just different words describing the same thing. That's gonna be the unthreaded part of the bolt. So this one is a little bit bigger and it goes all the way down. And then you got on the smaller sizes, you won't even have a shank or a grip on the bolt. It's just all threads. A lot of times when people are building a vehicle, they'll find a bolt that is the correct length and slap it in and call it good. And that's fine if the bolt's gonna be holding on something cosmetic, but if it's for something that's gonna be under a high amount of force, such as suspension or steering, you definitely wanna properly shank your bolt so I'll show you on the truck what that means. So today we're gonna to be getting the correct bolts installed on the engine cross member of the truck. Over here, I just have a standard 5 8 bolt. Uh, this is grade eight. And holding it up on here, you wanna make sure everything on the head side of the bolt is on. So in this case, it's just gonna be a single washer, but for whatever your application is, make sure that's all on there. And just lining this up approximately, you can see the end of the shank is perfectly aligned with the end of the tab. So this is what you wanna aim for, because on the bolt, the shank of it has a bigger surface area than the threaded part. So this is gonna be the stronger part of the bolt for sure. So you wanna have that at the shear points, which in this case is gonna be between the tab and this bushing. So this is the shear point right in here and where all the pressure is gonna be applied onto this bolt. These engine cross member bolts actually experience a pretty significant load when the truck is running, driving, hitting bumps, jumps, whatever it may be because the force comes up through the tire and that's translated into the shock, into this shock mount, and it's all this force is going inward. So it's gonna wanna push up against this engine cross member. So all that force is coming in at these two shear points and onto this bolt. So this bolt is actually pretty important. When we were building Ryan's truck over on this side of the garage, just from setting the thing back on its own weight without an engine cross member, you could see the shock tower start to fold in just slightly and that's because there's nothing for it to push up against to, which is why these engine cross members are so important. But that just goes to show you how much force is gonna be on this bolt, and that's just from setting it on its own weight. Hitting jumps, you're gonna have a lot of force going through here. So you definitely wanna have these properly shanked. So now that we have the bolt that is correctly shanked for this application, we wanna cut it down because you don't wanna leave it like this. You could, it's fine, but it just looks a little weird and you have a lot of threads that you're gonna have to put that nut onto. So we're gonna cut it down just to make things easier. So we're gonna get everything for this side of the bolt that we need, which is gonna be a washer, and we'll just mock it up with a normal nut right now. It'll eventually get a stover nut, um, but we're gonna put that on there and mark it to where we're gonna cut it. So here we got everything mocked up in the engine cross member. We're just running a normal nut like I was saying. This is the stover nut that it will eventually get, and I'll talk about the differences between these in a little bit but the size between the stover and the normal nut, they're really close in size. If you know you're gonna be eventually running a nut that's gonna be bigger, or longer rather, then you need to account for that when you're marking for this. But this is gonna be perfect for marking where we're gonna cut. Um, so we usually go, or I usually go three threads past where the nut ends, and that just allows this to be shorter, but you still have some threads poking out just in case. So, oh, there goes the stover. So three threads pass should be right here. So mark that, and that's where we're gonna cut is in between those two marks right there. 
So to cut this thing, we're just gonna be using a normal angle grinder. We've got our cutoff wheel right here. Uh, get this thing back on there. Always make sure, very important. All right, so here's where we mark the bolt. Here's the little black line right here. So we're gonna be using the cutoff wheel just to keep a straight cut. You don't wanna match the angle of the threads. You just wanna go straight on. So that's what we're gonna do. Not gonna clamp it down or anything, just gonna hold it by hand and cut it. All right, so we're cut. Now we're gonna switch over to the sanding disc and just get this cleaned up. Make sure it's not such a sharp edge and that the nut can thread on there smoothly still. So it threads off smoothly, threads back on smoothly. Everything's cleaned up, no burrs or anything. Uh, this bolt's properly shanked and cut down to length now. So we'll go ahead, uh, double check that everything's correct. So we'll get this off. Throw one washer on there, get up here, and then we'll get this slid in there. Bam, throw one washer. All right, so as you can see, perfect. Got two threads showing out the end here. Uh, that's properly shanked and it's cut down to perfect length for this application. And that is what you wanna do. That's the whole point of this video is getting uh, your bolts like this and have it be at optimal strength and not looking all funny. So I'm gonna have to cut all these other ones down to length and then we'll go over some nuts. So I got all the bolts cut down to their proper lengths. Now we're going to go over a few different nut styles that you're going to be able to run on here. First you have your standard nut. Uh, we honestly don't ever really use these on the truck, especially in any applications that are going to be under a lot of vibration or anything. These we usually just use for mock-up and we'll go at a minimum with a nylock. Um, and the, this is just going to include a little nylon seal on here that's going to keep everything tightened together. And these are a big upgrade from these, but this this Stover nut is what we use on a lot of our applications. So at the top of the threads here, it's gonna be a little bit distorted. So when you put it on, it's gonna be tighter right there, but it'll keep this thing locked on there. And this is good, especially if it's gonna be in a high temp area because you have no nylon seal to melt or anything. And these are just really strong and stay on there for good. Under any vibrations or anything, these things will hold on there the best. And I feel like they keep a better lock than even a nylock. So Stover's is what we run on everything on this truck for the most part. We usually use grade eight bolts on most of our applications. These are just a really strong bolt. And I'll put up a cool diagram on the screen of all the different strengths of this. Um, there's called a proof load, which all the tests they run on these bolts are in a machine that tries to pull apart the bolt. And the proof load is how much load you can put on here without it uh, deforming once you release the pressure. And then there's yield strength, which when you pull it apart, um, that's the amount of force it takes to when you release the pressure, it's deformed or elongated. And then tensile strength, which is what you hear the most, that's the strength that it takes to actually break this thing. And what's cool I was reading about it is if it breaks in this joint between the head and the body, it's called like a, a failed yield or a failed tensile and because it's not supposed to break there. They put a wedge on here when they're pulling it apart just to put a lot of pressure in this area, but it's not supposed to break off the head of the bolt. It's supposed to break on the body. So I found that kind of interesting. Uh, hopefully that taught you something and you can go ahead and figure out what the strengths of your bolts are if it's really that critical. We just use these as pretty much a standard just because it is a strong bolt. So I went ahead and got all those bolts in there and tightened. And now we're just gonna put a little thread checker on there. This is what we use, uh, Viztorque, Vibratite. Um, there's a bunch of brands of stuff that make this, but this is what we have. And so you're gonna wanna put this between the nut and the threads. That way you can check after time if this nut's backed off at all on the threads and gotten loose. So we're just gonna get this to the bottom. 
and give it a mark. So boom, that's all you gotta do, just a little line across the two. And if you come back and that line's broken or they're not even close to being lined up, you know that that nut has backed off and gotten loose and you know to tighten it. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. We went over a bunch of different topics inside this video, including what the shank of a bolt is, why it's important, how to figure out what shank you need for your application, how to cut down a bolt, and then the different styles of bolts and nuts that you can use. And then finally, how to put thread checker on there and the importance of that. So if you guys like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Mm.